Hi guys, welcome to Copycat Card with FreeCard. This is a tutorial where we embark on the journey of replicating real commercial products using FreeCard software. Today, the challenge will be to recreate a product sourced from the website of Alexa Ganta. So guys, the company has not commissioned me to create an ad for them. However, their website described them as a German company specializing in the design and manufacture of plastic and metal standard machine elements for the mechanical industry. In this four-part tutorial series, we will focus on modeling one of their products, a caster wheel with brackets. In the first and second part of the tutorial, we will delve into modeling the brackets. In the third part of the tutorial, we will tackle the wheels of the caster. Finally, we will wrap up the series by demonstrating how to generate screws and nuts in FreeCAD and assemble the whole thing together. As is typical in my tutorial, the workflow adopted in this series is chosen with FreeCAD beginners in mind and ensuring that everyone can follow along. So if you are ready to unleash your creativity and dive into the world of CAD modeling, Join me on this exciting journey as I bring commercial design to life with the power of FreeCAD. Let's get started and turn imagination into a reality. Make sure you are in the Parts Design Workbench and click on Create a New File. I have already done that. When you do this, you should have this place empty. But I just have two reference images. I will go ahead and create a new body. With the body selected, I will go ahead and create a new sketch. I want to start first with the top sketch. Because of that, I will go ahead and activate this top reference image here. So this is what we're going to be drawing out. Now with the body selected, let's go ahead and create a new sketch. The XY plane. The XY plane correspond to the top. And now I can go ahead and draw, start sketching. For this, it's just going to be arc aligned. So I'll be using this tool to draw the arc and this tool to draw the lines. And I will be adding constraints. Also, since this image, if you look at the sketch, you feel like we don't need to draw all the whole thing. We can just draw a quarter of it and find way of duplicating it across the axis. So I'll go ahead first and draw this section here. So I'll start by creating an arc. And I'll construe this arc following the dimensioning that I have here. I know this arc is 6.3 from the central Y axis, horizontal axis, and it's about 24.53 from the X axis. Having fixed this vectors, I know the other vectors. Let me just go ahead and raise it a bit. It's about 
13.42 apart and 7.75 difference in vertical height. And the last thing is to give it the radius, which is 15.5. I know here is a line that is tangential to this arc, and the length of the arc line, because of space, is what I showed here, which is 6.06 mm. By the way, all dimensions are in mm. So now I'm trying to add a tangential constraint. I click on the line, click on the hack, and that's. Now, same thing, I will just go ahead. I don't necessarily need to explain what I'm doing now. I will just follow the pattern, do an hack, a straight line, a line, and I will go ahead and affect these coordinates like we have on the drawing. So I'll just go ahead. I don't need to explain now, but that is essentially what I'm doing. Okay, now at this point, I'm done with the sketch. I will go ahead and duplicate it across this axis. One thing I want to do is to hide the dimension line. So all I need to do now is to select all the sketch, all these elements of the sketch. I have it here. I can either select it individually, like by going, and as you can see, as I'm selecting it here, you can see the selection is happening with time here. Or I could have also done it this way. I can also see it's the same thing. So find a way of selecting all the elements of the sketch first. And let's select this Y at this last because this is what where I want to mirror across. I select it and I come to this tool here that it says symmetry. And I click on it. And I have a mirror image of the sketch across this axis. Of course, as you can see, there is a line that connects these two um, sketches. I'll go ahead and use that line. Make sure um, this constraint sign, you see it. So it shows that it is coincidental with that vertex. And do the same thing as well for here. I will also select all this sketch and mirror it across the X. As this. 
Same thing, you can go ahead and select it individually, or you come here, select the first one, go down shift, and select the last one. I have everything selected here, and the X as its last, and I will also use this symmetry tool, and I have the selection minimum across the X axis. I will go ahead and join this sketch with a straight line, as you can see in the reference drawing. So now we're done with the sketch. I can exit out, but as a good process, I like to make sure that the whole sketch is fully constrained. I'm not going to explain how to fully constrain an object here. So the idea of fully being fully constrained is so that by accident, you will not be able to move any of these vertices around. If you look at this image, if you zoom in, let's look at these two vertices, for instance. You can see the color here. It means like this vector is fully defined in space, so you would not be able to move it. However, unlike this one, it's dark red compared to this, and it's easy for me to move it in space, so it is not fully constrained. found to constrain there are many ways to go about it but the easier way I do is like I try to find one of these vectors that is not well defined and I find a way of grounding it to the vectors that is fully defined and mm, you can skip the section or I'm just going to spin the video to the section why I go ahead and constrain it Yeah, so now everything is fully constrained, as you can see with this bright green color. So now I use the I can go ahead and hide this top reference image. With this sketch selected, I can just name it top profile. With the top profile selected, I will click on this part two and I want it to be 110 and now I will OK it. I want to sign a way of now removing some of the section and adding a thickness of 2 mm to this whole body here. To do that, I want, I will select the section I want out of this body, which is this. I will hold down my command key while I, for multiple phase selection. And I also want the bottom here out. 
which is selected, I come to this thickness two. First, I change this joint type to intersection. And you can see I have that section removed and I have the thickness added. But this is added outward. I want it inward. So I click here, make inward. And I want the thickness to be two and not one. Two. So now it has added two mm thickness. And so now we need to, if we go back to the top chip, yeah, we need to cut off this capsule shape and the center where we are going to add another body or future as we do along. So let me go ahead first and cut out this. Um, capsule shape. I will do that with the top selected, top image of the body selected, because this is where I want it to be cut out from. I click on the sketch tool, and I will go ahead and create the slot. There's a slot shape here. I'll click on it and draw it out. I think the contrast here might make it difficult for you to see what I'm doing. I can change this body to wireframe. So I can do that here. When I come here to a style, I change it to wireframe. I will go ahead and dimension it. Its video is 4.5 and 7.91 long. And this shape, as you can see in the drawing, is constrained to the hedges here, or the vector points here. Um, it's pretty confusing for me now. Let me go back to this um, original image. So it should be constrained to the vectors at this point here. And to reference the vectors here, I click on this create external geometry I select the head here. Now I have a point now where I can reference this image. I'll also be needing it for all the other hedges. So I can just go ahead as well and do that now. Because we have four of these. And I'm done with this tool. I can now go back to the wireframe. And from this other head here to this vertex is 20. It's not fully constrained yet. And we can see there is a vertical distance of 5.31 or 7.81 from the other one. So I think we just need one more constraint to less hard horizontal distance. From the first one to this, yeah, we just needed that one, 5.31. We go ahead and duplicate this shape. We don't have to draw it out. We can just use the same thing we did earlier on, the same trick. I select the first wall, shift, last, all the elements of this shape is selected. 
and I select this taxi slots and I come here and click on the ship. As we can see it here. Here are the dimension have been replicated. I can go ahead and constrain it. Um, this one should be easy because I just need to click this point and accept the position. I don't have to enter it because it has really been placed in the right place. Go ahead and copy all everything here yeah. and copy the exercise slots and go ahead and do this. So I have everything copied here. Yeah. So I just go ahead and finish adding the constraint. Last one, yeah. Now everything is fully constrained. So yeah, so we come to this rectangle too. You see where it says rounded rectangle. We select it, and let's draw it here. Again, let's change this to the wire frame mode. So what I'm doing now is to draw this round, round dead rectangle. And it's very simple. Let me first make sure that the triangle is symmetry across the point. I click on the diagonal vertices here at the edge, at the end, and click on this, the middle point last and come to this construction symmetry color tool now we need to go ahead and have the dimension the length is 50 as we see in the reference image and the height is 14. the radius is six Point seven three. And um, yes, we are done. Let me close it. It might be a good idea to rename it. Give it any name. I can just put top cut. Just give it any name that is you find suitable. So with this top cut out that I name it selected, I come here and click on this pocket tool. And yes, I have wait. So we're done with the top 